Hey there folks, this is the Rabbit here with uh, Future Proof Gaming. I'm just here to give you a little bit of information on D520. We've got an event in War Thunder right now uh, where you can actually unlock this plane through getting kills and assists. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what the numbers are for that. I'll have to uh, look it up again. But I wanted to give you kind of a rough rundown and overview of what this plane can do. It had a lot of unique features uh, down to its armament, its different fuel um, like fire suppression capabilities, and a couple other features that were really nice about this plane. Um, it's a pity it wasn't introduced earlier. It actually first flew in October of 1938. Um, and it never really saw combat until early in 1940. Uh, it did get a couple of air kills, but it uh, was retired in 1953, so it definitely saw a lot of combat. Uh, had a lot of flights taken out in it. Uh, it was powered by a Hispano 12Y-45 engine. Not bad. It was a V12, uh, power, putting out about 930 horsepower. Uh, the weapons included on it were four 7.5mm MAC cannons, as you can see. Uh, they had 675 rounds per gun, um, located very close by on the wings instead of being you know, farther out. Uh, and one Hispano 404 cannon in the nose. Uh, the closest thing I could really compare this to is a Type 99 20mm cannon. Um, that'll be with the Japanese. Though this web, or this uh, cannon did actually use uh, high explosive fragmentation, semi-armor piercing incendiary rounds, uh, which a lot of the British cannons used, even up to the Hispano Mark V cannons, uh, up at tier four and five. The Meteors actually use these shells and these belts. So if that if that tells you anything about how effective they are, they're definitely doing really well for themselves. Um, Along with the other modifications here, you can see it kind of follows the run of the mill. Of course, when you unlock these, you'll probably have all these unlocked. I haven't uh, unlocked any gift planes so far, so I don't know exactly how that works. Um, there's actually no other camo schemes or anything like that if you wanted to look. It's just the Free France camouflage. And what we're going to do today is we're going to compare a lot of these planes um, that it flew against and with. And we're going to see kind of how those fly. Uh, keep in mind that its max speed was 500 kilometers an hour at about 7 kilometers high. Um, the, those MAC machine guns on the sides uh, actually froze up around 20,000 feet high. So getting around to where this aircraft is most effective, when it's at its fastest, um, your machine guns are going to be a little bit unreliable. Now, that's on top of it being a 7.5 millimeter instead of a 7.7 .7 or 7.92 if you're in Germany. Um, it's going to be a little bit underpowered compared to what you're used to, but then again, you have 2,700 rounds. You'll be able to do something with that, I'm sure, even if you have to, like, pelt them to death. Um, basically, this plane could be compared pretty closely to a couple of different planes that are currently in the game. Um, not armament-wise in this case. This is the Hurricane Mark IIb. It had 12 7.7mm Browning guns over 4,000 rounds here. Um, the 2B could also carry rockets, which made it really effective. Um, if you're looking at these different speed and altitude characteristics, this one's a little bit more of a low altitude fighter. Uh, it can definitely turn fight. You can see rounded wing tips right here. Um, we have a same three-bladed propeller, and we have a similar powerhouse. Now, that being a 2.3 battle rating, uh, let's see, the D520 is at 3.0. That's probably just because it's got the cannon there. Um, and maybe the MAC cannons are modeled a little bit differently in the game than they were in real life. Because I know a smaller caliber definitely makes a huge difference. Even if it's, you know, 0.2 smaller. So, looking at that, uh, the Hurricane runs out of ammo surprisingly fast because of those 12 guns. Now, its main competitors, at least in War Thunder are going to be uh, planes like the MC-202 with the Breda Safat guns. That's about 1,800 rounds of ammo. Um, you're going to find that this plane is faster at a higher altitude. Um, so at altitude, the full gore is probably going to rip it a new one. Um, this plane was definitely used by a lot of the Vichy forces and, you know, occupied France. Uh, you're, going to, you're definitely going to find going up against these ones being a little bit harder. Um, they are 2.3, same as the Hurricane, uh, but the other one, the biggest problem for you is probably going to be the BF-109E3. 
Oh man. So this thing's got two 20 millimeter cannons. Um, the 20 mils are spaced pretty far out. If you compare that to how the, uh, the D520 is doing over here in the British line, uh, the D520's guns are much closer to the nose. Gun convergence is going to affect it a little bit less, um, but you're going to have a tighter spread overall. Um, the E3's got those two cannons, same amount of ammo in that cannon as, or in these two cannons as is in the, uh, in the D520's one cannon. So you're effectively looking at double the cannon ammo. Um, these ones, I don't know if they carry, I doubt they carry men and shots. Yeah, they are APAG and API, um, including self-destroying like incendiary and frags. So that's not bad. Um, this thing can't, you know, absolutely explode planes like a lot of that hef sappy does uh in a lot of cases but you can see the raw difference in the amount of caliber here you've got two 7.92s and these things though the bullets did travel slower they had a much higher penetrating capability um the balancing factor for this is of course they don't really have incendiary ammo on these belts so you're going to rely a lot on penetration and module damage um just like uh, a lot of the other planes that can carry that 250 kilogram bomb so it can operate in kind of a fighter bomber role um, and if you put a talisman on this thing it's not going to be quite as effective at uh, earning your research points and lions as uh, as something else but that's not bad you're gonna we're, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna fly out a lot of these planes we're gonna fly out the hurricane uh, we're gonna do a couple matches in the 202 and the e3 and we're just going to see kind of how they react in combat. And then uh, once we've unlocked the D520, we're going to take that for a spin. I'm going to switch it over to gameplay now. And uh, we'll do some voiceovers over the top, but I don't think I'll do live comms. All right, I'll see you in game. All right, guys, we're back. We're going to load into a replay here. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the live capture from this, so we're going to have to uh, view it by the replay. Uh, this is Roar in uh, Realistic Battles. I'm flying out the Machi 202. Um, this is an interesting game. I didn't find myself uh, challenged, but I did um, have to take some time to relearn a lot of the the different uh, ways the controls are working. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the icons are going to be missing. Uh, they're still trying to update a lot of the replay interface here. Uh, what you're going to be seeing is my camera view. Um, you won't see the reticle aimer, but you will see the way that the camera moves. Um, it's going to be all me. Alright, there we go. Okay, so this is me just checking my dive angle here. Um, the Machi excels, um, the 202 I should say, um, it excels in like mid-altitude combat. Uh, it's a little bit of an energy fighter, but it can also kind of turn and burn if it needs to. Um, here we see a lot of my team members going... Uh, for kind of the central avenue, a lot of them are going to try and either bomb out the base or uh, kind of work on the bombers that are coming towards us. We've got a Blenheim on the other team who's going to be an ass to pretty much all the fighters. Um, I do find myself mostly alone for the larger part of this. Um, I don't really have much help, uh, but my first engagement here you'll see a little bit is going to kind of take the heat off of uh, one of my teammates. He's another 202, I believe. Um, again, to reiterate kind of how this is going to be similar to the uh, 520. Um, the 520 has got very similar wings, but it is a little bit heavier. Um, the 520 is going to excel at a little bit higher altitude, but its weapons are going to be less efficient at that altitude. Again, I don't have a cannon in the nose or anything, but I do have two uh, 50 cals. Uh, above the nose and those are what I'm going to use for the majority of my strikes here um, you see me just trying to get above the cloud level this is going to be where you always want to start combat uh, unless you're like a spitfire or something like that we will see a spitfire or two up here uh, but they probably shouldn't be uh, they can really get down low and, and keep on turning with the um, near ground level Whereas uh, we can't quite do that. You'll see my controls lock up a couple different times where I'm just trying to pull up out of a dive or, or trying to turn and I just can't turn as fast as some of these other planes. Uh, we see I finally just got above that cloud level. And it's nice and clear up here. It's a good day to fly. Um, 
at this point my teammates are kind of asking me where the enemies are and of course none of them decided they were gonna climb with me to kind of support me I've got um, I think those are actually bots up at the top right um, I never see those guys again uh, that one blue dot you might have just seen off to the left is gonna be my uh, fellow Fulgore and he's gonna be helping me out I'm gonna be helping him out here here in the very beginning um, here we go let's see it looks like uh, the 202 Fulgore could be made in about 21,000 man hours so that's that's not too bad um, there are certainly worse times especially for bombers it took a lot of time to actually construct these planes um, the Dewatney 520 actually could be made in about 7,000 hours so it's about a third of the time um, and even faster than that uh, Germany was pushing out um, Messerschmitt 109s in about 4,500 man hours so they were mass producing the crap out of those um, so the Machi kind of fits right in the middle um, it's not quite as mass produced. Um, the parts are aren't as cheap. Uh, you're gonna find that it's a little bit more of an elegant plane compared to its uh, other cohorts at this kind of a level in Germany and abroad. Really, um, you're gonna find me sp fighting off uh, Spitfire One A's, uh, Hurricane Two B's, uh, and I think my main nemesis in here is gonna be the uh, Buffalo F Two A. I think it's the premium thatches, thatches version. I think it's got a 50 cal in there. Here we go. I've just spotted a couple of uh, enemies right here at the very beginning. Uh, your priority in these sorts of matches should always, always be um, going after the guys that are on a higher altitude or the same altitude as you. I see uh, trading a fire. I think this guy's going to go for me, but he doesn't quite. He, he actually goes for the guy who just got attacked, my 202 friend down there. Um, I turned to kind of intercept, and here's where you see that lockup. I'm not quite a, at a high enough altitude where I can enjoy um, the maximum turn radius of this plane. But again, nobody is high enough for that. Nobody goes up to 5,000 meters in, in this early tier. Um, I try to place some preliminary shots on this guy. can't quite get the guns lined up. At this point, I'm like, oh no, my friend better not die. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to turn and burn here a little bit. Um, the audio was cutting out as well. I'm not sure what the problem with that is. It must be a problem with the uh, replay system. I think it's also because whoever is, uh, like the announcer when he talks, I think the audio cuts out. Um, you see these guys failing to turn fight, and here's where we get the first glimpse of our F2A Buffalo friend. Um, Mercy83 is going to be my kind of nemesis this match. Uh, he's He operates a lot like Darth Vader. We're going to try and kill him. We're going to think that he's dead, and he's going to come back with a vengeance. Um, sadly, we don't find out whether or not he is actually my father. Um, that's a mystery we'll have to solve some other time. Uh, I get some initial sight on this, uh, it looks like a hurricane. I can't quite remember, it's either a hurricane or a spitfire. Um, pretty sure it's a hurricane at this point. And I'm just deciding who to go after. Hurricane is actively engaging, so I'm gonna go after him. There he is, Hurricane 2B. And, uh... Try to get his fifties lined up, and I do get him. I hit him, and I set him on fire. And so I'm like, okay, at least I've crit him. And then I see the buffalo kind of, or no, this is a Spitfire. He's kind of trying to head away, and he just catches on right before I manage to get him. I'm frantically turning, trying to catch up with him. And of course, he's got a higher turn radius at this point. He can look at that. He outturned the crap out of me. Um, I do a high yo-yo, try to get back in behind him. Uh, catch up with him. I see the smoke trail of the uh, guy I set on fire. He's he's trying to run away as fast as he can. Um, at the same time, this guy looks like he's trying to dive away and accelerate away from me. Here we go. I just cannot get those guns lined up trying to swerve left and right like he's doing. And my plane just locks up. I can't get that sort of a uh, that sort of behavior out of my plane. The Spitfire is much better. And it's really a shame that... Uh, the Stefan does not actually use that power a little bit more. As you can see here, I'm I'm getting more shots lined up on him. I set him on fire again. So <laughs> this is two planes so far I've set on fire. Keep track of that. Um, and oh, I turn around. Fire's already out. Probably didn't cause any damage at all. Um, I know he's injured though. I've hit him a couple times now. Uh, he's just gonna. 
wait, he does something foolish here. He starts turning left and right. He's kind of losing all of that speed that he's gaining. I see somebody behind me shooting it. I, I presume it's him. Yeah, there, there's my friendly uh, 202 shooting at him. And at this point, I say, okay, screw it. And I try to turn away, and I find this buffalo. And see, those are the kind of smooth maneuvers that you probably wouldn't be able to pull off in a 520. Um, since it's a little bit heavier, I just did a nice little aerobatic flip there, and I got right onto his tail. Um, it wasn't planned or wasn't expected, but it ended up being the easiest thing ever. Um, he goes into a shallow dive, tries to get away from me. At this point, he's leaking oil, which is a good thing. Um, his engine's overheating a little bit, I presume. And so I see him heading back towards base. I'm just going to gain some altitude and follow him. Uh, I know I can't catch him right now. Uh, even if I went into a dive, I probably still wouldn't be able to catch him. But what's nice is he's eventually going to have to land. Either his engine's going to go out or he's going to get to the airfield in the distance. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. Um, here's where I kind of, I, I tunnel vision a little bit. I see tons of friendlies and enemies fighting back there. And I'm like, you know what? If I don't take this guy out, he's going to be a problem. He's going to be a problem later. And as I start to dive down, I see him um, gaining elevation. He's trading that, that energy for, for elevation. Oh, and that's not good. I'm catching up to him fast. And that this is his, his big boo-boo right here. This really messes him up. Um, spoiler alert. I'm catching up to him. I want to I wanna try to save my, my big guns for when I know I'm going to hit. And sadly, I just can't get the guns lined up again. He's a little bit too maneuverable, and he's and he's doing low, you know, small yo-yos. I see I got a couple hits on him, but he goes into a, a turn, and I have way too much speed, so I just overshoot him. From here, um, he's pretty much out of options. Now he's got to try and speed away. He doesn't have anything else that he can really do, and he goes into a, a it looks a, like almost a stall. And I get a couple good hits on him. Set him on fire. Third time this game. Instead of staying on me and trying to get a couple hits on, he turns away. Tries to go back towards the airfield. I'm flying away at this point. I'm like, okay, I've set him on fire twice. He's got to be die dead, right? No. Fire went out, and he's probably going to land. I don't want to risk the AAA fire, so I just fly away. Um, be the bigger man. Walk away from that engagement. Um, don't let him bait you into those AAA, because they can rip you up. Uh, I see an enemy plane on low altitude with a bunch of allies kind of swirling around him. Uh, there was a hawk, but he did get shot down. So at this point, I'm wondering what this other plane is. And here, I'm just going to speed it up a little bit. You're going to see that I'm gaining altitude slowly. Um, I already know that I'm the highest altitude at this point, um, besides maybe one of the bombers. Nobody else is staying at a high altitude. Um, so these guys are all turn fighting over in enemy airfield. Um, there's one guy down there. I think it's the Heinkel 111. He was shot down just now. And he's sitting there trying to hit with his turret. It's not really working. So I go in for an attack run. You can kind of see that I'm gaining a lot of speed. I'm just trying to get a, a good hit on him. Ah, oh, and I missed a lot of those shots. At this point, I'm down to about 200 rounds of ammo um, with each gun. So about 400 total. I can really stretch that out and make it worth it because these these rounds with the 50 caliber are all APIT. Uh, they have armor piercing capabilities and they'll light whatever they hit on fire. So as long as I can hit some of those, I'll be great. I'll be golden. Um, I see he's still trying to turn fight for some reason, and he just can't manage to keep it in the air. He crashes it. Uh, I see this AAA here, and this is a really curious event. Um, I've had a lot of good experiences with this 50 cals in the past. You can see I nail him straight on and pull up out of it. No damage, no kill. Um, kind of sad, but again, it's just it's just a triple A kill. <laughs> it's not worth it, you know. These guys are going to stay here and try to fight um, the triple A, <laughs> I guess. I don't know what their idea was, but uh, they're doing their own thing. Uh, I think there's a couple BF-109s in that group that are swirling around. Um, at this point, I don't have bombs, I'm low on ammo, I have a pretty good amount of fuel left, and I haven't been touched by a single machine gun. Um, I see this guy coming towards me, I'm like, oh no, he's gonna, you know, <laughs> he's gonna try and attack me, or he's gonna go for one of the bases or something, and he doesn't move at all. Um, so I make the move, and I'm, I'm 
maneuvering above him, he's going to have to trade off a lot of energy if he wants to uh, turn up and attack me. So I move through the clouds above him. I'm hoping he hasn't noticed at all, and I see that he's just passing under me harmlessly. Look at that. Oh, man. Make it too easy. So I just roll over. Um, I come down out of the clouds looking for a boom and zoom attempt. And here's this guy. Look, he doesn't even see me coming. I start. I open up with the sevens, smell blood, open up with the fifties, get a good fire on the hurricane. Um, at this point, I'm like, okay, is he going to come after me? No, he's on fire. Fire looks like it's spreading, and I just let him be. Don't overcomplicate things. Just as I'm trying to raise in my altitude, um, I unwittingly outmaneuver. My buffalo friend, he's back. Um, he tries to follow on me, but he just can't. This is this is a huge advantage of altitude. He's trying to get onto my level, but he just can't keep up. Uh, he has to trade so much of his speed for that, you know, 200 meters to get up to where I'm at, so he can line up a shot. Um, he stalls back down, and he gets up a little bit more speed, which surprises me because I come around here and I find out that I'm in a head-on. I'm like, ah, oh, damn! Try to get out of it. Don't fully commit to that. You're going to crash straight into him. You're going to waste everything. Um, so. You, I did a little, I juke a little bit, try to get the altitude advantage once again. That And he's proven at this point that he's not a very skillful player. So what I'm going to try to do is outsmart him instead of outpower him. Uh, I lose track of him here through the clouds, and I assume that he's lost track of me. Again, this crew skill is about 440. So he's he's doing pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty good on spotting enemy planes and things like that, and withstanding Gs. Um... I lose track of my artificial horizon here, and I stall out. You can see my camera freaking out a little bit. At this rate, I'm going to fall like a rock. And I hope that I'm I'm under him when, or over him when I come out. So I look around, and I figure out that he's, he's behind me now. Um, and this is one of the sad things about clouds. You really can't tell where everybody is when you're inside of them. Uh, if it was simulator, I wouldn't be able to see, period. I'd have to rely on my instruments. But uh, I turn around here, he's got about two and a half kilometers on me. Um, it's a pretty good lead, but again, I have the altitude advantage. You stay as high as you can. He's either going to have to turn up, you know, maneuver upwards and lose some of his speed so I can catch up to him, or he's going to stay low enough that I'll eventually be above him with my superior engine. Um, again, the Buffalo is a little bit slower of a plane. Um, it's also smaller. And so I know I can gain, I can gain momentum if I just dive. Again, there's no rush. I'm just flying uh, right under the cloud cover. I'm sure at this point, if he doesn't see me, he hasn't. You know, he he deserves to die at this point. Um, it's been pretty much me and him the entire battle. There have been other fights every now and again, but that that really hasn't made a difference. Again, he turns around, uh, tries to come straight at me, but he he turns too far um, upside down, and he he bleeds off a little bit of his speed, and that results in a loss of control that sways his, his reticle enough that he can't hit me. Um, again, I keep all my speed, all my energy, and I trade a little bit of that to get right above him again. And he knows his whole song and dance by now, so he's going to turn away. Give it a little time. Lose him in the clouds again. At this point, I know where he is, and I know I'm not going to stall out again. I'm trying to keep track of where he is. Again, this is tracking my camera pretty realistically. There we go, I come out almost right behind him. Open up with the sevens. You want to use those to range your target. Um, the bullet velocities and the travel times and things are different. Um, but as long as you can score hits on him with the sevens, you can hit him with the fifties. So do a high yo-yo again, get right above him. Again, this is all just using my, my verticality. He's coming at me at this point. I fire a couple shots at him. I... I tweak his canopy a little bit. I don't hit anything big because I've got my convergence set at 500 meters. Not great for head-ons. And vertical targeting is on. Um, so my bullets are traveling high as soon as they leave the barrel. Um, they flew right over his canopy, honestly. <laughs> if I had no vertical targeting, that would have been the most perfect canopy shot. Uh, at this point, he tries to use the same techniques that I use. Tries to, you know, retain his speed and, and get farther away from him, but he just can't do it. Uh, the 202 is a superior machine in, in almost every way. 
better armament, um, faster speed, higher altitude. And uh, the F2A, if it really uses its turning capabilities at low altitudes, and he's really clever with how he uses that, he can definitely score some hits on me and get the upper hand. Um, again, every time I try to strafe left and right, my controls really lock up. Um, they get really stiff. And if he was a more experienced pilot, maybe that's one of the things he could have done to really outsmart me. We're coming down, and I say, screw it. All right, I'm done. Um, I'm not going to play any more games. Try to score hits with the sevens. Get a little flash, and I engage a little bit more. Miss a lot more shots. I'm down to about 30 to 60 rounds uh, left for both guns. Uh, I see a... <laughs> <laughs> There's a Stuka heading in, and he's he's got those uh, 792 machine guns. And I guess he's going to try and do something to that buffalo. Uh, it looks like he's also leaking some oil. As the buffalo just decides he's going to farm up some quick kills. Um, get some armored cars or AAA, and he can't even do that. Uh, he's probably low on ammo again at this point. The F2A1 Thatch's buffalo doesn't carry a huge amount of ammo that can do any damage. I track him with my 7s, fire again at the 50s. Oh, so critically low on ammo. I don't know what I'm going to do at this point. Another high yo-yo real quick. Hopefully I can come out. Um, the Stuka's chasing him again, firing those 7.92s. The MG-151s. And then he gets rammed. <laughs> Balot Zero has been on his way back to the airfield and then was repairing for most of the game. He comes back and the first thing that he does is ram that target. He rams that last guy in the match. There we go. That's most of the game here. At this point, we've lost. Um, yep. <laughs> They've lost every plane. Uh, I don't score anything, but I do score the on hand. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's that replay for you. Um, I'm not sure if it'll show me the stat card afterwards, but uh, that's the Mach-E 202 for you. Um, basically using it the best it could possibly be. Um, here we go. I'm probably going to try the email, and then I'm going to try a game with the uh, Hurricane. That might be split up into separate videos. All right, guys. Uh, I'll either see you later or I'll see you in the next replay. Hey, guys. All right. I'm back. Um, this time, I'll be in a Hawker Hurricane Mark 1. I was going to go out in a Hawker Hurricane Mark 2, but the amount of firepower that you get as well as the uh the increase in speed it's by like a hundred kilometers um i'm just i don't think i don't feel like that's a reasonable comparison so here we've got the uh, hurricane mark one it's only got eight seven point sevens instead of the uh 12 that the mark two has uh also no rockets or anything like that there we go this is going to show you basically uh my camera view again we're going to raise the flaps at the very beginning. I found that's usually... It can be easier to uh, lift off sometimes. Um, I was going to film it a little bit differently. You're going to see a little bit of stuttering here. I don't think this uh, game was recording well. Uh, you can see a little bit of stutter. Basically, I'm really up-tiered in this match. Um, you will you might see uh, like that plane right down there. It's going to be a Hellcat. I've got this in double speed just to kind of speed things up. Korea is a big map. Uh, I've got a P400 back there. There's a couple of other planes that are just, they're a little crazy. And uh, I think that since I'm a, like a battle rating 2.0, this is this is a little high. Um, Hellcats have like, I think it's either four or six 50 cals, uh, Browning Mark IIs. <laughs> so I don't, I, don't, I don't really know what to expect. Um, this is a special camouflage um, from the uh, live.warthunder.com site. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, this guy does a couple of different British skins, and this one is really nice. It's an experimental like uh, Sea Hurricane camouflage. Yeah, it's not too bad. What you see here is a lot of uh, my positioning. I'm just trying to get a little bit of altitude here in the beginning. I notice a lot of these American planes that are can be really good at an altitude or, or staying low and that's a big problem with the United States players um, anyone playing as the uh, Air Force is just they gotta be higher uh, in order to use their weapons and their uh, 
vehicles the most efficiently they possibly could. Um, I also wanted to apologize real quick. I'm probably sound a little bit snuffy and and uh, my breathing is a little bit heavier than it normally is. Um, I'm getting over a sickness and not the best time to be really starting up a channel and trying to promote things, but you know, what can you do? Everything gets better over time. Um, you can also see some of the paneling on the hurricane. A lot of the armor that's used is, uses kind of like a very like a like a grouping of uh, a lot of small angular plates, and it really helps cut down on the amount of damage um, the hurricane takes. If a bullet penetrates through, it's it's liable only to damage that little um, sheet of plating instead of the entire airframe. You'll see large holes get punched in the plane, and it's still being able to fly. Um, the Wellington also uses that to greater effect. It even uses little honeycombs of, of armor, and that's why if you find yourself putting just shells and shells into these planes, then you know exactly what's going on. Um, the plane's armor is just too high. What I'm seeing right here uh, is a bunch of yaks, like yak 7s, yak 3s, yak 1s. Um, all of them have 20 millimeter cannons. Um, some of them have 50 cows, most of them have 7.7s, and they're dangerous. The engine is a lot more powerful, um, and they can they can operate at this level faster than me and hit harder, and so that scares me a little bit. Uh, another thing you see is a lot of my teammates are down low turn fighting um, in planes like the Hellcat, uh, the Corsair uh, 1A, and that's no bueno. Uh, a lot of those people aren't are basically being outturned by what are essentially biplanes, I-16s, I-153s. Uh, there's even a couple of Yak 1s down there. We've got a pair of Yak 7s that are in a squad. Uh, you might get to see a little bit of them later. But what's happening here is uh, these Yaks are slowly picking off the American team members that are that are low enough that they can't use any of their energy fighting tactics against them. I have get into a couple situations here. I'm trying to dive in on these guys, and they're just too fast. Look at these guys. They're just screaming through the air. The Hurricane really excels in low-altitude, uh, mid-speed fights against planes that are slower than it. And unfortunately, with this matchmaking, I didn't get any of that. You see the Yak-7 uh, nicks me there, and that is eventually what's going to end me. That little nick. There we go. I'm just I'm just trying to turn in time to get some hits on these guys, and they don't even seem worried. Um, this guy Renegat and uh, his buddy that that are circling around me right now, they're in a squad and they're really trying to hammer on me. Right now, I'm just using the superior uh, turn in yaw to get behind these guys, seeing if I can just line my guns up for one extra second. Um, they're in no rush. Their planes aren't really jerking at all, so I can tell that they're calm. They're not worried too much, and apparently they're just lining up shots on everybody else. At this point, you can see, you well, you can't see, but I'm already down under uh, 1,600 rounds from my t original 2,800. And eight machine guns will really tear up whatever ammo reserves you have left. Um... Here I am trying to outturn this Yak-7. <laughs> and look at that. He's just zooming away. He doesn't even care. And this whole time, um, you can kind of see me leaking a little bit of uh, fluids. Um, not in real life, obviously, because I'm sick. But <laughs> in in game, I'm definitely losing a little bit of my, uh, my oil or water or whatever that is. They are water-cooled machines. And as soon as they lose a little bit of that water, they're, they're done. Um, they can't stay airborne because the engine can't process um, the combustion it needs. Can't lubricate itself either. I see this Yak-7 was zooming away. Now he's turning back to head back into the battle. Here I get a couple of shots. I'm trying, just trying to uh, match the velocity of my bullets with how, how much he's firing at me. And it's really not working out. At this point, uh, these Yaks are still circling me. I feel like I'm basically... You know, I'm on my last leg and their vultures coming to pick me off. Um, 
they're also chasing this other guy over here. I'm being attacked by this AAA. I get nicked again, but that these are in my wings and like rear fuselage. At this point, I see a Yak. I see a couple, a couple I-16s. Um, they're all just dogfighting, and I'm left in the dust. These guys definitely overpower me in every way. And this is kind of worse matchmaking on the lower end of the scale. Um, the Maki technically has a higher battle rating than this plane, but this plane somehow just got into a Korea map against the Yaks, so... Think what you like about that. Um, I'm slowing down a little bit. I see an I-16 behind me, um, and he appears to be losing me. So I'm going to keep on following these guys, but they're two yaks in, in attack, and these guys are the two pre-maids. And they're just toying with this. Uh, I, think it's, I think he's a uh, P-36. And there he goes, down to the ground. The two yaks. Now they're just going to fly away. Um, they don't really have to worry about me at all. They can just wander off and do their own business. Um, at this point, I can't really turn around because that I-16 is behind me. But there's no use in moving forward because these guys are going to outpace me. And if they wanted to turn around and strike, they could do it at any time. Um, here I go turning around. I'm like, okay, if I'm going to get any sort of kills, I'm going to get this I-16 back here. I've got to. There we are. I see him. He doesn't appear to be uh, turning to me. I hit him a couple times. Light him on fire. That's good. Decide that's that. Um, my engine is kind of slowing down at this point. I'm a little bit worried. It's pinkish red. Um, starting to flash. Oh. Man. So... At this point, I'm thinking about, you know, maybe landing the plane, parking it, getting out, and going in maybe for, like, a sake or some sort of a, some sort of Korean tea. I think that would be nice. Do a little bit of sightseeing while I'm, while I'm here. Um, the battle's left me far behind. Um, nobody's in the air anymore. Anybody that is in the air is either too high, um, or they're back home repairing, or they're like those yaks. They're way outside of the bounds of uh, combat. And I'm stuck here about 10, maybe 12 kilometers away from my base. Um, my engine's about to go out because of that one hit I sustained towards the beginning. Um, that just happened to give me that fuel leak. Or, uh, it's not a fuel leak, I still have about 35 minutes of fuel. But this leak is really killing me. You can see that I can't really gain much speed. I, uh, had forgotten at this point. Uh, if that airfield will actually repair you. It would be really nice if it did, but I can see why for balance reasons it doesn't. That'd be a little powerful. Um, I decide that it, at least if I'm going to go down, because my engine is black at this point, uh, if I'm going to go down, I'm losing speed already. Uh, at least I'll try and land on an airfield. I'll try to land somewhere it's protected. That I might even have the possibility to repair. Um, the landing flaps on the Hurricane are really effective. You can see here, basically, I can do whatever I wanted. I'm just going to levitate above the ground until I decide. <laughs> I mean, my nose is pointed towards the ground. Uh, I raise my landing flaps and actually get down onto the, onto the floor. Um, at this point, it's really easy to, to slow down. Just hold the brake button. Um, again, nobody anywhere nearby. Those yaks are 10 kilometers away. <laughs> no, this this isn't even a fight anymore. I haven't seen an enemy in you know a good two minutes. So, basically, um, that's the hurricane. <laughs> it's uh, I guess the matchmaking really screwed me that time, but I did get a little bit of action in. Uh, what you're really going to be looking at for the D520 is a big mixture in between this sort of maneuverability at low altitudes um, and and the the light hitting guns like those those are really you're gonna notice that first your Mac guns aren't gonna hit for anything uh, there goes my engine it's slowing down it's stopping I'm gonna quit out of the replay now and I'll give you a little bit of a recap you're gonna you're gonna notice those 
really, really bad machine guns. Um, and they really are objectively bad. Um, the stats, the, the caliber, everything is off. And it's a similar belt, what I've got here. Let me just double check. You can see, there we go, IT. And then there's one API thrown in there at the very end. Um, so those are all IT at 7.7s. And if you look at the D520, you're going to see that at 7.5, you have a bunch of IT. So you got a smaller caliber, and you saw what those things were doing to the, the Yaks, um, and they were doing nothing. <laughs> so as long as this thing doesn't get into the 3.0 battle rating it's supposed to have, um, it might do really well. Like the 20 millimeter is good, but it, with 60 rounds, it's not good enough to justify 3.0. The speed isn't good enough to justify it, but it can um, operate at a higher altitude. Uh, at 3.0 for Germany, let's see. Is it? So it'll be the F2s and F1s for Germany. That's 100 kilometers faster uh, with the 20 millimeter Menningschoss uh, cannon. That's insane. That's a 2.3 battle rating. The F2 has 7.92 machine guns, rockets. The 15mm, which is still really good. Let's see. Um, you'll go up against the uh, D5, most likely as well, if you're fighting against Germany. That's two 20mm cannons with a thousand rounds of ammo. If those two have a thousand rounds of ammo and it's a, like a bomber attacker, why does the D520 only have 60 rounds when it's a much heavier plane? I get that it's a little faster. But that's ridiculous. So it's a very special bird. Um, you're going to see it share a lot of characteristics with a lot of planes, but do nothing really well. Um, it doesn't have a killer armament besides the Hef Sappy. Um, those really help out. But aside from that cannon having its rare moments where it's going to shine, you're going to see a mixture between the MC-202's um, nose-mounted armament that's pretty good. And its performance at altitude, and the uh, hurricane, the hurricane's really terrible um, machine guns. Anyways, that about wraps it up. Um, sorry for the low mic quality and, and how sick I sound right now. Uh, I hope you found this video enjoyable. Um, I was gonna get some different commentary in there and actually see what it was like inside of a game, but again, I couldn't get the recording software to work with it. Um, let me know what you think. Leave your, any comments. Um, rate it. Subscribe if you can. It really helps me out. And uh, I'll be making more videos as much as I can. I'd love to get some more input on what you guys think uh, I should start doing on this channel. I'm going to look into recruit more people and uh, get things kind of rolling. Um, I'm looking to do this part or full time depending on how many games I can find to do. And uh, if I can get any sort of upgraded uh, software or equipment to really edit this stuff together. Anyways, that's more than enough conversation. Um, I'm going to sign off, and uh, I, hope, uh, I hope you have better luck than me if you decide to fly out the Hurricane 1B today. Um, and I really hope the 520 turns out being better. Um, better than it, it looks like it's going to be in combat. Anyways, guys. Take care. This is Rabbit signing off.